Yes, guys. So let's start the question number one. EXC Limited acquires 70% of equity shares of Z Limited as on 31st March 2012 at a cost of 70 lakhs. So that is a cost of acquisition. The following information is made available from the balance sheet of Z Limited as on 31st March 2012. Fixed assets of 120, investment is 55, current assets are 70, loans and advances of 15, 15% debentures are 90, current liabilities being 50. The following revaluations have been agreed upon, not included in the above figures. So these are, these are the additional revaluations that you need to consider. Fixed assets are up by 20%. So 120 fixed asset up by 20%. So the fixed asset value is 144. Investments are down by 10%. 55 is the value of investment. Down by 10% is 49.5. Z Limited declared and paid a dividend of 20% on its equity shares as on 31st March. 2012. X Limited purchased the shares of Z Limited at 20 rupees per share. Calculate the amount of goodwill or capital reserve on acquisition of shares of Z Limited. Whenever you have to calculate your capital reserve or goodwill, what we have to do is cost of control. That is your step 5. So, whenever you are talking about step 5, we need to consider cost of control. Talking about the first thing, he has acquired 70% of the equity shares of Z Limited at a cost of 70 rupees, sorry, 70 lakhs. And down below, he said, each share is purchased at 20 rupees. That means the number of shares that he has purchased is 3.5 lakh shares. 3.5 lakh shares have been purchased, and he is also saying that he has put, is there, they are being declared a dividend at the rate of 20%. If you observe, what is the date that he has acquired? 31st March 2012. That means towards the end of the year. But still he will be able to receive the dividend for the year 2011-12. Since he has acquired it on 31st March, dividend should be paid at a later point of time. So he is entitled to receive such dividend. But such dividend is also called as pre-acquisition dividend as per AS13. If something is called as a pre-acquisition dividend, I will deduct it from the cost of investment. That is the first adjustment that we need to consider. So let's start first. Cost of investment all rupees in lakhs seventy deduct pre acquisition dividend. He was not a shareholder in the year 2011-12, but still he received the dividend for the year 2011-12. So the dividend received will be called as a pre-acquisition dividend and the dividend is 20%. So 20% of 3.5 lakh shares, each share of 10 rupees, pre-acquisition dividend is 7. So my cost of investment should be reduced to 63 Each share is 20 rupees. If I have acquired it for 70 lakhs, then this 3.5 lakh shares. We need to compare this value with share in net assets. Share in net assets of the subsidiary and the subsidiary's name is Z Limited. on the date of acquisition. Now, net assets can either be calculated as assets minus outside liabilities or you can do equity share capital plus reserve. Check the information given to you. There is no capital, there is no reserve which is given to you. So I have to calculate using the other formula that is assets minus outside liabilities. So we have the assets and liabilities, there is some revaluation. So leave some gap because whatever value you get here, he holds 70% of it. So his share is 70% of the total net assets of the company. 
will fill up the figure of the total net assets and then we will arrive at something called as goodwill or it can be a capital reserve. We will fill up whether it is a goodwill or capital reserve at a later point of time. But first we need to calculate what is your share in net assets. So let's start calculating working note number one. Net assets of Z limited. We need to consider the revaluations as well. So consider one by one to calculate your net assets. I'll start with assets. Assets minus outside liabilities. Take one by one asset. First asset is the fixed asset. Twenty percent revaluation. So 120 is the book value plus 20% revaluation this will give us 144 I'm writing everything in lakhs again the second one is your investments investments having a book value of 55 they are revalued downwards by 10% so minus 10% 49.5 there is no other revaluation, so remaining assets and liabilities take it at book values. Current assets are 70. Loans and advances is also an asset. Fifteen. This will give you the total assets. We need to reduce the assets with the amount of outside liabilities to get the net assets there's two or there are two outside liabilities the first one is 15 percent debentures which is 90 and there are some current liabilities Which are 50. My total liability is 140. So your net asset should be a total of A minus B. And the total of A is. This guys, what is the assets total? So my net assets is 138.5 my net assets total is 138.5 when you know this value you can fill it up here 70 percent of 138.5 is a share in net assets 96.9 so this will give you either a goodwill or capital as a now observe I've acquired paying 63 I've acquired net assets worth 96.95 that means I'm paying less amount to acquire higher amount of assets it's a gain for me such a gain will be transferred to capital reserve if I paid extra it is a goodwill since I'm paying less it's a capital reserve for 33.95 That will bring us to the end of first question.
Yes, guys, so let's start the second one. Variety Limited holds 46% of the paid up share capital of VR Limited. The shares were acquired at a market price of 17 rupees per share. The balance of the shares of VR Limited was held by a foreign collaboration company. A memorandum of understanding has been entered into with a foreign company providing for the following. The shares held by the foreign company will be sold to Variety Limited and the price per share will be calculated by capitalizing the yield at 15%. Yield for this purpose will mean 40% of average pre-tax profits for the last 3 years. So last 3 years is 30 lakhs, 40 lakhs and 65 lakhs. So you need to take an average of that and average profits multiplied by 40% will give us what is the yield. And my capitalization rate for the yield is 15%. Now the actual cost of the shares to the foreign company was 5,000, 5,40,000 rupees. The profit that would accrue to them would be taxable at an average rate of 30%. The tax payable will be deducted from the proceeds and variety limited will pay it directly to the government. So something like a TDS. Out of the net consideration, 50% will be remitted to the foreign company immediately while the balance will be transferred to unsecured loan which will be repayable after 2 years. In the above agreement, it was provided by all the concern for being given effect to on 1st April 2012. That means the acquisition was done on 1st April 2012. The total net assets as on 31st March 2012 was 1 crore and it has decided to write down its fixed assets by 1,75,000 and the current liabilities of VR Limited on the same date was 20 lakhs. The paid up capital of VR Limited was 20 lakhs divided into 2 lakh shares of 10 rupees each. Find out goodwill or capital reserve of Variety Limited on acquiring wholly the shares of VR Limited. Now, if you understand the question clearly, he is saying Variety Limited already holds 46% of VR. The balance 54% of the shares were held by a company called as a foreign collaboration company. This foreign collaboration company is selling that 54% back to VR Limited or Variety Limited at a particular cost which are not given, which we have to calculate using your yield, average profits and whatever it is possible. Now, that will give you what is the total cost of acquisition. Once he acquires this 54%, he'll become 100% shareholder of the company. So once he's a 100% shareholder of the company, we don't have to take a share in the net assets. Share in the net assets will be anyways 100% into the net assets. So that is the total value. So what we are more concerned about calculating is, what is the cost of acquisition of those 54%? Now, he's talking about something in the para B and C. Para A was talking only about how to calculate the PC. While para B and C, he was talking more about how is that PC being discharged. I will deduct a certain amount of TDS that will be paid to the government. The balance proceeds 50% paid now, 50% repayable after 2 years. Whatever it is, will it change my cost of acquisition? It has no impact on the cost of acquisition. So I don't have to consider the para B and C. I can completely eliminate the para B and C to calculate your cost of investment. So let's start. Take only para A into consideration and let's start computation of your cost of acquisition. Put on heading, purchase consideration to foreign collaboration company. PC to foreign company. The method of calculation is capitalization of yield. So, for this purpose, let's first start with computation of average profits. Average profits of VR Limited. VR Limited is the company whose shares are being acquired. Now check, the profits are given as 30, 40 and 65. Now, someone who is of an opinion that it's in an increasing trend and I have to take a weighted average profits, here it is not possible to take weighted average profits. The simple reason for it is for you to assign weights 
we need to assign weights in the order in which the years are there. So the most recent year will get the highest weight. In the profits given, he just said these are last three years profits. Nothing is given said that this 65 is the most recent year or this 30 is the most recent year. So I cannot apply weights here. So what I have to go for is compulsorily a simple average profits only. But if the question would have been drafted saying that year 1 30, year 2 40, year 3 65, if it is clearly mentioned, then I will definitely take a weighted average. But here I will take a simple average for average profits. Average profits are 30 plus 40 plus 65 by 3. I think this is 45. Everything in lakhs again. But this is not the yield. To capitalize the yield, first of all, you need to calculate yield. What is he saying? Yield would mean 40% of average pre tax profits. 40% of average pre-tax profits of 45, this is 18, this is yield and now he is saying that to find out the price it should be calculated by capitalizing the yield at 15%. So my capitalized yield. is 18 divided by 15 percent is 120 this is the capitalized yield of the company but how much are you acquiring I am acquiring only 54 percent so this is the total company's value we need to adopt what is the 54 percent of it so my purchase consideration to foreign company is 54 percent of 120 I think this is 64.8 yes. there is the PC This is the cost of 54%. 46% is already held. It already held and it was purchased at 17 rupees per share. That is sufficient to get what is the cost of those 46%. This is the cost of 54%. Total combined will give me what is the total cost of investment. But I need to compare the total cost of investment with your share in net asset. There is no adjustment for dividend given in the question. I need to calculate share in net assets. Check your share in net assets. Share in net assets of VR Limited. Anyways, 100% only. So, write it as net assets or share in net assets doesn't make any difference. So, Again, net assets either by share capital plus reserve or you can do by assets minus outside liabilities. Check the information given in the question. Accordingly, we will adopt it. Now, check the information which is given in the question. Write a para below. After the para, para C, there is a para below. The above agreement provided that all the concern will be put effect from 1-4-2012 and the total assets of the company are 1 crore where they have decided to write down the fixed asset by a lakh and 75,000 and current liabilities are given as 20 lakhs. That is sufficient enough information for us to say that he started calculating as per assets minus outside liabilities. Write everything in lakhs. We have come down to everything in lakhs now. Assets are 1 crore. 1 crore I can take it as 100 lakhs. Less downward revaluation of assets minus 
my downward revaluation of assets is 1.75. Also reduce the amount of outside liabilities. Outside liabilities here is given in the form of current liabilities. My current liabilities are 20 lakhs. That will give me the net assets. Of VR Limited 78.25 that is a net assets of VR Limited now this net assets of VR Limited we have to adopt in computation of cost of control let's start the cost of control computations for the computation of cost of control we need two figures cost of investment and share in the net assets there is no share in net assets. Entire 100% is acquired by Variety Limited. So entire 100% should be considered. Put on adding cost of control. And start with cost of investment. Your cost of investment has two parts. A portion, 46%, which is already held. What is already held by Variety Limited? Show the computation. He holds 46%. He holds 46% of how many shares? Come down to the last paragraph. They were total 2 lakh shares, which he has acquired each share at 17 rupees. 20 lakh share capital divided into 2 lakh shares of 10 rupees each. So, how do we calculate? 46% shares of total number of shares 2 lakhs acquired at 17 rupees per share. Take it in lakhs because we have reduced everything in lakhs. The value is? This is 46%. What about the remaining 54? Remaining 54 I acquired from foreign company. So PC to foreign company. From the foreign collaboration company, we have purchased the remaining 54%. And the remaining 54% has been acquired at a cost of 64.8. 64.8, my total will be? 80.44 this you need to compare with the amount of share in net assets share in net assets of we are limited now we are limited we acquired already 100% so the entire net assets can be taken so 100% of net assets of 78.25, entire 78.25 can be considered. Now observe, I have acquired paying 80.44, but my net assets is only 78.25. That means I am paying extra. That extra what I paid is goodwill. Goodwill is 2.19. Goodwill what we have acquired is 
Yes, guys, come to the treatment of dividend. Yesterday, we have seen five cases for treatment of dividend or adjustments for dividend. So, a part of it will use it here. H Limited acquired 3,000 shares. H Limited acquired 3,000 shares of S at a cost of 4,80,000 on 1st August 2012. The capital of S consisted of 5,000 shares of 100 rupees each fully paid up. The PNL account of the company for year 2010 showed an opening balance of 1,25,000 and the profit for the year being 3 lakhs. At the end of the year, it declared a dividend of 40%. Record the entry in the books of H Limited in respect of the dividend. Be careful guys because the first point there itself is saying that H Limited acquired 3,000 shares of S Limited at a cost of 4,80,000 as on 1st August 2012. And wherever he is talking about, he said profit for the year 2010. 10. It's not 2010, 11 or something like that. When I'm perfectly talking about particular year, then I'm referring it to a calendar year there. So that means the calendar year here which we have is 2010. Out of 2010 calendar year, if this is 2010, so it should start with 1st January 2010, ending on 31st December 2010. When did he purchase the investments? Check. He purchased the investments on 1st August of 2012. Somewhere here, he has purchased the investment on 1-8-2010. So everything is 2012? I'm sorry. Now, let's talk about this. If he purchased on 1st August 2012, he receives a full year dividend towards the end of the year. Now, the full year dividend which you receive towards the end of the year, I'll split it into two parts. This part, up to the date of acquisition, I have 7 months. This is called as pre-acquisition period. And the dividend during this period is called as pre-acquisition dividend. So, whatever dividend I got for the pre-acquisition period, pre-acquisition dividend should be deducted from cost of investment. Then what about this period? This period of 5 months remaining, this is post-acquisition period. When I talk about post acquisition period, the dividend for this period is called as post acquisition dividend and this dividend should be directly credited to P&L because it will be taken to profits of the current year. Now this is the adjustment that we have. Now whatever dividend is there, I have to split it into two parts, then I will treat it as per the books of accounts. My entry should go something like this. This is the dividend which is already received it is the declared dividend record the okay sorry it's only declared dividend so I'll record the entry as dividend receivable if it was received then I'll directly write bank account debit so my entry should go like this dividend receivable account debit whatever is the amount of dividend that you have to receive out of this a portion should be treated as pre-acquisition dividend to the extent of seven months which has to be reduced from the cost of investment. So I'll credit to investment in S limited. And the balance we have to take it to dividend income or directly you can put it to PNL. Anything is fine. It is credited to PNL. Now we need to assign some values for this. How much of dividend is receivable? How many shares did you buy? 3000 shares. Each share has a face value of 100 rupees and they are declaring a dividend of 40%. So what is the total dividend receivable? 3000 shares, 100 rupees share, 40% dividend. And the total dividend is? 120,000. Eh? Now, for the credits, credited to investment for pre-acquisition period. What is the pre-acquisition period? Seven months. 
So 1,20,000 is for the full year. 1,20,000 into 7 by 12. So 70,000 transfer to investment. Balance 50,000 should be taken to P&L because it is a dividend income. This 70,000 we call it as pre-acquisition dividend which is credited to your investment accounts. So take it on the entry and show the calculations. Yes guys, let's see the next one regarding minority interest. A Limited acquired 30% of the equity shares of B Limited as on 1st Jan 2005 at a cost of 10 lakhs where B had an equity share capital of 10 lakhs and a reserves and surplus of 80,000. Both the companies follow a calendar year in the accounting year. In the four consecutive years, B Limited fared badly and suffered losses of 2,50,000, 4 lakhs, 5 lakhs, 1 lakh 20,000 respectively. Thereafter in 2009, it experienced a turnaround and registered a profit of 50,000 and in year 2010 and 11, they have recorded a profit of 1 lakh and 1 lakh 50 respectively. Show the minority interest and cost of control at the end of each year for the purpose of consolidation. 
your cost of control will never change. Why? Because cost of control is always calculated with respect to date of acquisition. Your date of acquisition will, won't change. Your cost of acquisition, cost of control also will never change. So once you calculate a goodwill or capital reserve, it will stay as a goodwill or capital reserve throughout. So, pocket aside. Coming to the minority interest part of it. Now, minority interest, whenever we have to calculate year-on-year -year minority interest and we have multiple years here because starting from 2005 up to 2011, he has been given multiple years and how do we calculate minority interest here? Yesterday, we have seen a particular set of calculation where we have seen minority interest is share in net assets. So, if I find out what is the minority interest as on 1st January 2005, the minority interest at the end of 2005 will be just increasing with the amount of the profit that is earned. So let's try to demonstrate the impact. So what are we trying to prove here? Let's say I have a subsidiary balance sheet like this. Subsidiary balance sheet on 1st April 2014. I have an equity share capital of 100. A particular set of reserves to the extent of 80 and I have other liabilities to the extent of 70 and a total assets of 250. On this particular day, if I'm supposed to calculate the minority interest, I'll say minority interest is a share in net assets and let's say the minority is 30%. If I say minority is 30%, then check. What is the value of net assets on 14 2014? I can calculate this way. Assets minus outside liabilities or other liabilities. Or I can even say equity share capital plus reserve. This is 180. So if I am talking about minority interest. On... 1-4-2014 then it will be 30% of net, net assets 180 54 let's go for the next year let's say a subsequent year that is a year of 2000 31st March 2015 14-15 the company recorded some profits let's say equity share capital was 100 my reserve and surplus let's say we have added some profit I'll make it as 125, make it as 120 and I have other liabilities, let's say my other liabilities are about 90 and I have assets for 310. Then what is the net assets as on 31st March 2015? Net assets on 31st March 2015, either do assets minus outside liabilities or equity share capital plus reserve. Net asset is 220. Then my minority interest 30%. 30% of 220 is 66 now if I carefully confirm these two figures of 54 and 66 the difference is exactly 12 identify the profit between these two years profit the reserve was 180 it turned out to be 120 at the end of the year that means the company earned a profit of 40 during the year so if during the year they earned 40 rupees how much is minority interest overhead Minority interest is 30% of 40, current year's profit earned is 12. So I can simply say 54 opening minority interest plus their share in the profits during the year that is 30% of 40, 12 will directly give me what is a minority interest at the end of the year. So I can write it like this. When I have to calculate minority interest, minority interest at the beginning of the year plus minority 
minority share of profits during the year? This will give me minority interest at the end of the year. This is a simple formula which we can write down for the minority interest calculations. And this problem will be using this particular formula. Instead of calculating minority share of net assets, minority interest at the beginning of the year and minority share of profits during the year, you will automatically get the minority interest towards the end of the year. Now, the critical concept here is, whenever I have a minority interest, this minority interest is normally shown on the liability side of balance sheet. In the consolidated balance sheet. Why do I show? The question arises why? A simple reason is because I am following full consolidation method. Yesterday we have seen a question by solving under proportionate consolidation method where the balance sheet tallied without writing minority interest. But whenever I am talking about computation as per or consolidation as per full consolidation method, I need to get in minority interest. A simple logic goes like this. Whenever I consolidate, the net assets here is 180. If 30% is minority holding holds, 70%. So I need to take only 70% of this 180 rupees here. That means I need to consider only 126 rupees as net assets to be included for the purpose of consolidation. But what is the method that we follow? Full consolidation. What does it mean of full consolidation? That means my total net assets of 180 are taken over by the holding company. When I am taking over total 180 rupees of net assets, he is saying that when you are increasing your asset side with the amount of 180 that is a full net assets, 30% of this 180 does not belong to you. So that 30% I am showing it as a liability and such liability we call it as minority interest. And a simple logical sense that is the whole scenario which is happening. I am not paying anything to the minority but I am saying that his share of net asset also I have included. So I am including that fellow as a liability in my consolidated balance sheet. Things are going very well until your minority interest is positive. Happily, I'll show him on the liability side. My balance sheet will definitely tally. But if in case, if in case you're deducting the amount of minority interest share of profits, if this becomes loss, every year the minority interest keeps on reducing. Let's say it reduced to that extent that your minority interest started showing negative now. Now, how will it start showing negative? No problem. Minority interest is nothing but share in net assets. If my net assets are less than zero, Possible? Very much possible. Because equity share capital is 100. Here I am seeing reserves and surplus as a positive figure. Now if the losses have been accumulating so much that reserve and surplus will sit on the asset side at 120. Then what will happen? 100 rupee equity share capital. Your reserve and surplus is negative 120. So your net assets of the enterprise is minus 20. Minus 20 into your 30% minority interest. Minus 6 is your minority interest. Now, minus 6 of minority interest, where do I show? I can't show it on the asset side with the negative sign. So, what should be the situation now? Minority interest will show will be shown on asset side instead of showing on a liability side. Absolutely wrong. Not possible. The reasons I have. The first reason, will minority interest fellow pay you something? Nothing. I don't pay anything to the minority interest. And minority interest does not pay anything to me. So showing him as an asset in your enterprise is absolutely wrong. I can't show him as an asset. So what do we have to do whenever it is a negative? Now does it mean that all the situations you cannot show on the asset side? There is one particular exceptional rule where I can still show him on the asset side. That exceptional rule is if the minority holders hold partly paid shares then I can show him on the asset side. Because if it is a partly paid share, for the unpaid amount of capital, I can make a call and receive cash from minority interest. So whenever I have such kind of situation, minority interest can be shown on the asset side, but only to the extent of unpaid capital. Only to the extent of their unpaid capital, I can show on the asset side, saying that if I call the amount, that minority interest fellow will pay me this amount of unpaid capital, not beyond that. Then, 
what if that fellow is a fully paid share, he does not have any liability to pay anything extra and still he is having a negative balance. Now, I can't show it on the asset side. It is unjustified if I put it on the asset side because he not gonna, he's gonna pay, not, he's not gonna pay anything. There's a limited liability whenever I'm talking about a company. So minority interest will not contribute even one rupee for you towards it. So asset is not possible. So what he says is, instead of showing him an asset, according to AS21, what he says is whenever you have a negative minority interest, you need to adjust it against reserves for CBS. He is saying that do not take it under minority interest. You nullify the reserve in the consolidated balance sheet or you deduct it from the reserve in the consolidated balance sheet. Another clever question asked. What if the reserve in consolidated balance sheet is also negative? No problem. Negative reserve is justified. If you can have a negative, you can definitely have a negative reserve as far as the consolidated balance sheet is concerned. So I will show the reserve in surplus with a negative sign whenever it is a loss. So minority interest should be compulsorily deducted from the reserves for CBS if minority interest is negative and minority interest includes only those shareholders who are fully paid up. If he is a partly paid share, I can still show him on the asset side but only to the maximum of the unpaid capital on shares. So put on heading negative minority interest. First take down this one guys, where minority interest calculations were given. First take down.
Yes, guys, for the negative minority interest, like we have discussed. If the shares are fully paid up, in that situation, negative minority interest will reduce from reserves for CBS. If shares are partly paid up, then minority interest is presented on asset side of consolidated balance sheet only to the extent of unpaid capital maximum is unpaid capital again in excess beyond that we have to compulsorily reduce it from reserves for CBS only now there could be a situation where subsequently there will be earning profits and if they subsequently earn profits again your minority interest will come into positive figure once you get again a minority interest of positive figure such positive figure can be reported on the liability side that is an implied statement, but this is what is required for the statement, for a negative minority interest treatment. Now let's check the question number four. Start reading the question number four, guys. A acquired 70% of the equity shares of B on 1st Jan 2005 at a cost of 10 lakhs when B Limited had an equity share capital of 10 lakhs and a surplus of reserves and surplus of 80,000. Till there, information is sufficient for me to calculate cost of control because cost of control is calculated on the date of acquisition. That is if sufficient enough information given to me. So let's start calculating cost of control. Cost of control will not change every year. It is a constant figure throughout. Cost of investment. Investments cost 10 lakhs. I need to compare this with share in net assets of B Limited with respect to date of acquisition. So on the date of acquisition, what is the share in the net assets of the company? Now to identify the share in net assets, I need to take both reserve and surplus, sorry, reserves and surplus as well as equity share capital. That is a net assets. Share capital plus reserve and surplus will give me net assets. So let's start. Share in share capital. What is his share? 70%. What is the share capital? 70% of 10 lakhs. So 7 lakhs is my share of share capital. My share in reserve and surplus. Seventy percent of what is the reserve and surplus on the date of acquisition? Eighty thousand. So this is fifty-six thousand 
my total share in net assets is 7 lakhs 56,000. That is my total share in the net assets of the organization is 7 lakh 56. I have acquired the investment at 10 lakhs. Net assets value is only 7 lakh 56. From there I can see that the balance should be treated as goodwill of the firm. Goodwill is 2 lakhs 44,000. It will stay constant throughout. It will not change every year. Cost of control. Remains same. Every year. Since it is calculated. With respect to. Date of acquisition. minority interest now every year we need to calculate start with 1st April 2005 put on adding minority interest As on 1-1-2005. For computation of minority interest, we need to take their share in net assets. Net assets represented by share capital and reserves. So their share in share capital plus their share in reserves and surplus. Reserve and surplus is 80,000 on that date. 30% is minority interest. Capital is 10 lakhs on that date. 30% is minority interest. This will be 3 lakhs. This is 24,000. Oh, minority interest is 3 lakh 24,000 as on 1st January 2005. To get minority interest at the end of the year, I do not have to work hard. I just need to consider the profit of 2005 that is sufficient. What is the profit of 2005? If I had badly, so 5, 6, 7 and 8. 4 years they have made continuous losses. So let's keep taking their share of losses. The first 2008 is 2 lakh 50, uh, 2005 is 2 lakh 50 thousand. So their share of loss in 2005 his share 30 percent loss 2 lakh 50 thousand this is 75 thousand loss profit I would have added loss so I'm deducting so what will be the amount of minority interest so what will be the amount of minority interest as on 31st March 2000, 31st December 2005, 2 lakhs 49,000. Similar way we can continue. 2005 we have already considered, considered 2006. Share of loss in 2006, 30% of loss 4 lakhs. 
one lakh twenty thousand loss. Minority interest as on thirty first December two thousand six, one lakh twenty nine thousand. Next, their share of loss in two thousand seven. Is five lakhs, thirty percent of five lakhs is minus one lakh fifty. Now it becomes negative twenty one thousand. I cannot report this as a liability. So though we write it as minority interest as on thirty first December two thousand seven, write down below that. Should be deducted from reserves for CBS. Similarly, go for the next year. Share of loss in 2008, one lakh twenty thousand loss. Thirty percent of one lakh twenty, thirty-six thousand loss. And my minority interest, as on 31st December 2008, fifty-seven thousand negative. Again negative, so wherever we have negative, we need to adjust it against, or should be deducted from reserves for CBS. Thereafter, he experienced a turnaround. So from here, you will start getting profits now. Share of profit in 2009. 30% of the profit. 2009 profit he registered is 50,000. That will give you fifteen thousand rupees of profit. Put it as a positive figure. Now, at the end of the year, minority interest as on thirty-first December two thousand nine is still negative. It is still forty-two thousand negative. If it is still negative, again I have to deduct it from reserves for CBS itself. Then share of profit in two thousand ten, thirty percent off. Two thousand ten profit is one lakh thirty thousand. Still have negative twelve. Again negative th figure. So minority interest as on thirty first December two thousand ten. This negative figure also deducted from reserves for CBS. Finally, H share of profits in two thousand eleven thirty percent off. His share of profit in 2011 is one lakh fifty thousand. Forty-five thousand positive, guys. Now you got a minority interest of a positive figure, thirty-seven thousand. This will be reported in the balance sheet on the liability side for balance sheet as on 31st December 2011. Since you got a positive figure, you don't have to write it as an adjusted against the reserve. 
You got a positive figure here. 33, huh? Yeah? That will bring us to the end of the problem. These are the preliminary problems before we touch the comprehensive problems where we have to complete it with the balance sheet as well.